Happy Friday, Baylor College of Medicine and friends of Baylor. Uh, Lily is wearing her Wonder Woman uh, outfit today, so we're very excited about that. Uh, and she's looking like the you know, Wonder Woman that she is. Uh, so what a what a great what a great week. If we were surfers, this would be a blast. We're starting our fourth wave of COVID infections. I mean, really, this is just totally out of control. Uh, fourth wave has hit many, many parts of the world, uh, Asia, African, Latin American, uh, mostly driven by the Delta variant that we all know so well, hear about every day on, on, on the news. Uh, unfortunately, the death toll has passed 4 million people worldwide. France is all concerned about fourth wave, so they've announced uh, new vaccination requirements, and everybody's mad at Mancone for that. Uh, Pfizer but can only be considered, I'd say, uh, uh, low emotional uh, intelligence is pushing for the third uh, booster shot, uh, despite the fact that most people feel we only need to, and half the world's unvaccinated. So it looks a little awkward. We're talking about a third dose to be done in the U.S. Meanwhile, half the world is unvaccinated, not even able to get a first dose. So that's that doesn't look so good. And of course, love the British government. Thank God for them. The, I mean, how stupid can they? <laughs> they have lifted all restrictions uh, as of July 19th. No, no more physical distancing, no wearing masks, opening all the bars and restaurants, no capacity limits. Meanwhile, <laughs> look at their, they're having a little, they're having just a little bit of a problem. <laughs> They've got the biggest fourth wave on earth. And it's, I mean, it's a mess. And even though half the country is vaccinated, unfortunately, they're vaccinated with AstraZeneca which is not very effective against the Delta variant. And so 40% of the admissions to their hospitals are in vaccinated people. So they're actually a mess. Uh, and, and to sort of get rid of all social distancing and all viral control is just ridiculous. But you know, that's why they're who they are. Uh, there are a lot of hotspots now. Argentina, Colombia, uh, Spain, UK is a hotspot now, Libya, most of the parts of South Africa and Mongolia continues to be a real problem. Very, very a large number of cases. And here is the worldwide numbers. You can see a very clear evidence of that fourth wave picking up. So there are some countries that are doing pretty well at vaccinations. At least they're getting over 50%. Uh, Chile, Israel, and the UK, although <laughs> their vaccine isn't working so well, but uh, they are over 50%. And Canada, Canada was way behind us, but is now ahead of us in the vaccine, uh, in the vaccinations for their population. Russia, Indonesia, and South Africa are fewer than 25%. So they're actually doing very poorly. It's interesting to look at the dynamics. Israel was really the fastest to get vaccinated. And you can see they, they did the best. Chile was way behind, but because we talked about the CoronaVac trial last week, this is a Chinese company with a killed uh, virus vaccine, they, they rolled the whole country. Like 11 million people immediately got vaccinated. So they actually have exceeded everywhere else in terms of population being vaccinated. The U.S. started strong and is tapering off, and Canada started very late, but has really picked it up and doing very, very well. So uh, these are really important because if you look at death rates in countries, the countries that have less than 25% of people vaccinated, the death rates are increasing in South Africa and Russia and Indonesia. And in those countries where it's over 50%, the death rates are falling. And that's, uh, you know, Argentina, although it was on fire before, now over 50% vaccinated, their death rate is falling. Uh, Chile, it's falling. So the, the countries that are vaccinating, doing well on vaccinations, are seeing the benefit to their population. Well, what about the U.S.? The U.S., we're seeing the beginning of a fourth wave. Don't know how big it's going to be, but it's definitely a fourth wave. We still are only 48% fully vaccinated, and what we've seen is a pretty dramatic rise in our case number. So if you remember, we were just celebrating three or four weeks ago down to 12,000 cases. Now we're up to 31,000 cases, so 140% increase over last week, and the death rate is up again now, uh, 33%. And as uh, we've just heard from the CDC, uh, the Delta virus is now 83% of the virus in the United States. You know, it was 6% like six weeks ago. So this is a really dramatically infectious virus. Uh, and we're becoming really a country of two, two peoples, <laughs> those that are vaccinated and those who are unvaccinated. And the vaccinated folks are protected and the unvaccinated people are not. 
And if you look at, you know, there's really amazing data. Like if you look at 99.5% of all COVID-related deaths are in the unvaccinated people. <laughs> so, again, people just need to start thinking about getting vaccinated. And there's real outbreaks in Arkansas, Missouri, Florida, parts of the Mountain West. And, and the problem we have is we really run out of people, you know, who want to get vaccinated. It's, it's really slowing down pretty dramatically. The hot spots are getting hotter. So look at, look at Arkansas, Missouri, Louisiana, Florida is back on, on fire again, and uh, parts of the Mountain West. And if you overlay that map with the map of where the lowest vaccination rates are, guess where they are? So I don't know how many ways you can tell people. But in states where there's low vaccination rates, there's high, high infectious disease. I mean, it's just so obvious. So, you know, there was an interesting comparison. Let's take the five most vaccinated states and the five least vaccinated states and compare them. So just look at the arrows. The five, these five are clearly uh, flat without an increase in cases. And the ones that are up are uh, because they're the lowest vaccinated states. So the lowest ones are Alabama, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Wyoming. The highest vaccinated states are Connecticut, Maine, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Vermont. And you can just see the difference in caseload. It's quite amazing. And it's not just in caseload, it's also in hospitalization. So in Arkansas, Missouri, and Florida, where there's low vaccination rates and high case number, hospitalizations are going up. Keep, keep getting to the same conclusion. It seems like you ought to get vaccinated. Anyway, in the Texas Medical Center, our, our number is over one. That's bad. It's, it means that the virus is winning in our neighborhood. Uh, we went from a few hundred cases just a few weeks ago. Now we're up to 500 cases a day. Our test positivity rate's almost 5% again. It's 4.2%. And, you know, our hospitalization numbers jumped. We were only having 40 to 48, 40, 50 hospitalizations, now 100 hospitalizations a day, again, because of COVID. And as a result, a lot of the mask mandates are coming back around the country. Los Angeles County reimposed their indoor mask mandate. San Francisco area, they uh, imposed mask wearing back in seven counties and the city of Berkeley. And they're being discussed now in Arkansas and Missouri where cases have gone up. And an interesting phenomenon, the American Academy of Pediatrics is now calling for mask mandates, whether you're vaccinated or not, for anybody over the age of two as we approach school. Now, that is different from what the CDC recommends. So it's worth pausing on this because it's very confusing for people who are sending their kids to school in the fall. So what they did was look at all the impact of COVID on the pediatric population. And what they've summarized is there's over 4 million uh, children who've had COVID cases, about 14.2% of all reported cases. We don't really know the prevalence in the pediatric community, but there have been some estimates that are 5%. That's probably fourfold too low. My guess it's between 15 and 20% of all kids have actually been uh, infected. The recent numbers, though, are kind of uh, scary. This past week, there were 19,500 COVID cases in children, and they are now representing 22.3% of all weekly reported cases. Well, that's not surprising because there's a group of adults that are vaccinated, and now the only people who are getting sick are the unvaccinated uh, because they don't want to or don't have availability of it, and kids who are not eligible. And if you look at uh, since the beginning of this, there have been 16,756 hospitalizations and 346 children have died. Now, that's relatively small when you consider the number of kids, but it's still 16,000 hospitalizations and almost 400 deaths. That's, that's not good. And so the CDC is recommending that over the age of two, uh, if you're unvaccinated, you wear a mask. But if you're vaccinated, you don't have to. The American Academy of Pediatrics is now recommending that everybody wear a mask. Uh, and I, I can understand why. You know, it's, uh, uh, it's too hard in a school to say who's been vaccinated, who's not been vaccinated. And as, until uh, everyone is eligible for it, it seems to me that we should be protecting kids that are, you know, that are not yet eligible. So... I personally feel that if I were running a school, I want all the kids wearing masks. And I would also overlay that with physical distancing, making sure ventilation is good, hand washing, all the things you know to keep, uh, keep viral spread down. Because we do want kids to get back into school. I mean, that's really important. But we don't want to just send them an infectable. So 
I think it's it's really really interesting. Well, the, but the CDC and the American Association of Pediatrics really are different uh, in their beliefs and what to do. So what can we do to improve upon vaccine hesitancy? That sort of seems to be our biggest problem right now is getting to 70% vaccinations. It's going to mean we got to convince another 30% of the country to get vaccinated. Uh, so there was an interesting uh, Kaiser Family Foundation survey trying to address uh, this very issue. And remember, I reviewed this before, people who were very hesitant to be vaccinated. Well, there was sort of three groups, those that really wanted to be vaccinated. There was a group that we were going to wait and see. And then there was a group like over my dead body, as I said, could be. Uh, and so uh, they looked and re surveyed those people. And it, interestingly enough, in the wait and see group, about 54% now have gotten vaccinated, at least one dose of vaccination. So half of those wait and see people are moving forward uh, to get vaccinated. And surprisingly to me, at least 24% of those that said, I will never get vaccinated, have gotten vaccinated. So there was, they asked them, well, what, what did you hear? What persuaded you? You know, we're always talking, we're always throwing data out. You know, you hear it on the newspaper, on the newscasts all the time. You hear politicians talking about it, you know, get vaccinated. Nobody listens to them. So they said, well, what about, let's ask the people who actually said, I don't want to get vaccinated and then got vaccinated, what convinced them? And this was interesting because this was uh, independents, Republicans, Democrats. It was not related to your party. Uh, it was men, women, all different races. So here are the, some of the quotes. Friends and family talked me into it, as did my place of employment. Okay, so friends and family start talking to people. And, you know, we are em emphasizing it as an employer. My husband bugged me to get it, and I gave in. Okay, that's a good one. So if your spouse isn't vaccinated, just bug them until they do it. My doctor recommended it, so healthcare professionals still remain important influencers. I became convinced that some of the rumored side effects were not true. So as people see their friends being vaccinated and not dying in front of them, that is, and then pressure from family and friends, and I wanted to uh, safely visit with uh, friends and family members. So, you know, the main point of this is don't give up on people who say they don't want to get vaccinated. Keep bugging them. <laughs> Just keep bugging them. And I know a lot of people who say, you know, I've been vaccinated. My kids won't get vaccinated or my, my sister won't or whatever. My sister's been vaccinated and I bugged her until she got vaccinated. But I do think that that's the way to do it. Now, this is the group that said with the wait and see group. And this was one, seeing that millions of other Americans have been safely vaccinated, made them convinced that they should go get vaccinated too. Hearing pro-vaccine messages from doctors, friends, and relatives. I'm giving you a pro-vaccine message. <laughs> get vaccinated. Uh, learning that not being vaccinated will prevent people from doing some things like traveling and going to events and restaurants. Okay, now you can understand why the CDC decided to loosen restrictions for those people because that convinces some people, if I can go to a restaurant and would not wear a mask, Maybe that's a good thing. So that was, the, the, that was the, actually the rationale behind the CDC loosening things up. But it's interesting to see that some people were influenced by that. So they looked at, at, at the people who were uh, overall vaccine hesitant, and 50% decided that got vaccinated. 50% uh, was they, they learned or heard something that persuaded them. So we got to keep throwing data at people. Keep throwing data so that they, they hear something that will convince them. And then a third of it was someone just persuaded me to do it. So it seems like the most influential thing is keep giving people the right information that convinced half of them. And then the third of them just be a nudge, just nag them until they get vaccinated. So my sister's always saying, you know, so she's got friends who didn't get vaccinated. Can you tell me what to say to them? And so based on this, that it should be data, I'm going to give you some data. So. If you look at a, just the different ways of saying the importance of vaccination, by the end of June, coronavirus vaccines have prevented about almost 300,000 deaths in the United States. In states with low vaccination rates, more than 99% of COVID-related deaths are in unvaccinated people. Uh, over 18,000 American who, Americans who died of COVID in May, only 150 were fully vaccinated. 18,000 deaths, only 150 vaccinated. In Virginia, 2,400 people died of COVID, 18 of them were vaccinated. During the same time, 37,000 Californians died, 71 were unvaccinated. In the month of June in Maryland, 130 died, zero were unvaccinated, uh, were vaccinated. So the point is that the numbers being vaccinated are just overwhelming. Now, it doesn't mean that you won't 
potentially have a problem with, if you are vaccinated, but it's just overwhelmingly in favor of doing it. And then a couple of other things. If you have friends in business, <laughs> did you see what the market did a few days ago just at the threat of a fourth wave? I mean, it's, it hurts the economy. And for friends who like to travel, I just say, do you ever want to see London or Paris again the rest of your life? I mean, that's the problem. You know, so there, we, it really is impairing our ability to just sort of go back to normal. So the last, uh, the last thing I wanted to help, again, a question from my sister was, didn't understand this whole thing with Johnson. Johnson's not effective. There was a, a paper in BioRx IV, which is a, an online publication, it's not peer reviewed yet, that said neutralizing antibodies before the Johnson & Johnson uh, vaccine were significantly less than the mRNA vaccines. That may be true, but I want to explain, if I can, why that may or may not be relevant. So if you think about the number of antibodies you have to have, it's sort of filling a bucket. T in order to neutralize the Wuhan virus, that's about the number of antibodies you have to have. You need more to neutralize the UK variant, the alpha variant, and you need even more than that to neutralize the delta variant. The mRNA vaccines generate such an immune response it handles all the variants. The Johnson & Johnson one is less for sure, but it's still enough to handle the variants. The problem is natural infection just barely handles the Delta virus and AstraZeneca or one mRNA shot, one shot for those people who are only getting one, does not ma manage the Delta virus. You don't have enough antibody to manage the Delta virus. So uh, hopefully that clarifies why you can have one being slightly less effective but still having enough antibodies to uh, manage the uh, infection rate. So let's turn to my favorite segment. Olympic report. Uh, remember the Olympic ideal? This is my favorite thing in the world. You think the Olympic ideal is for people to come and, you know, compete in sports and athletics. So I've tried to translate the Olympic ideal to bring thousands of athletes, coaches, trainers, and support personnel from around the world in a tight cluster to live together indoors during a global pandemic in a mostly unvaccinated country. <laughs> that is the new Olympic ideal. And they're really succeeding at that. Meanwhile, in Tokyo, now there are over 1,000 cases a day, and it's under a state of emergency. There's a poll from the Kyoto News that showed 87% of Japanese do not want to participate and want to get those Olympians to get out of their country, uh, which I don't blame them because it's just bringing every single strain of virus from around the world into, into Tokyo. Uh, and so I've decided I think the right thing to do is change the medal count this year to the COVID count. So how are we doing? Well, 20,000 20, athletes, coaches, and referees, and other officials have poured into Japan in recent days. 71 so far tested positive for COVID. Uh, there have been uh, 33 staff members of contractors who are actually Japanese. So the Japanese are in the lead in the COVID count. There are 33 Japanese. Uh, there are 28 Olympic officials, but I, mean, I don't think they count. We're just going to, because they're all over it. But one U.S. gymnast already, Coco Goff, our wonderful 17-year-old tennis player, tested positive. Six British athletes and two of their staff members, one poor beach ball, volleyball player from the Czech Republic, two players and a video analyst from the South African soccer team, and of course, the South African rugby coach. Now, if you got into a scrum, the entire team's infected. So what, we'll, we'll be following this closely and we will be giving you the COVID counts uh, in the weeks to come. I want to finish with a couple of shout outs. First of all, uh, I want to thank Rose uh, Gathaya. Came all the way from Kenya to visit me and say hello. Wanted to say hello to Lily as well. And of course, uh, our own Tom Kasky, the American Society of Human Genetics awarded him the William Allen Award recognizing substantial and far reaching contributions to human genetics. So congratulations, Tom Kasky. So can't wait to see you next week. Lots to talk about. I will see you next week. How are you? Hey, sweetie. Oh, you're such a...